In this video, I'm going to show you how you can take the free plugin Prime Slider and how we can use that to get creative with our designs inside Elementor. But there's one reason why I really like what Prime Slider offers. So stick with me throughout this video and I'll show you why in a moment. So first of all, Prime Slider, is it free? Yes and no. There's a free version, which is very fully featured and there's a pro version. So let me quickly show you the pricing on the pro and the difference between the free and the pro version. And I think you'll be really interested to see how small a difference it actually is. So first of all, let's take a look. So this is the Prime Slider website. As you can see, there's a couple of demos, there's information on here, the usual things you'd expect to see. What we're interested in though is the pricing right now. Now ignore the discount because this is currently a end of year sale. Chances are when you see this video, this might not actually still be available. However, the pricing structure when it's not on sale is still crazy cheap. So as you can see, normal price for a personal website yearly is $10 roughly, 30 for five sites, and then you've got the agency which is unlimited websites for $70. They've also got a lifetime deal and whether you want to jump on this is entirely up to you. I've just grabbed the personal $20 lifetime for one site so I can test this out and have access to it as it develops. And as you can see, various different prices moving forward. So what's the difference between the free version and the pro version? And why do I think this is such an interesting proposition? Well, let's take a quick look at the differences. So this is the difference between the free version and the pro version. As you can see, the Features are basically exactly the same. The only real difference between the free and the pro is you get some extra skins available inside the designs. So if you want to open up more design options, then the pro version may be something you're interested in. You'll get priority support. You'll get a special discount and a refund policy. Obviously you can't have a discount and a refund policy on something that's free. However, the free version has a lot to offer. But what is it that I like about it so much and why do I think this is interesting? Well, there's one simple thing, dynamic content. This is not locked behind the paywall. Yes, you do need to have Elementor Pro installed to get access to dynamic tags anyway, but if you are an Elementor Pro user, you have dynamic tags built directly into the free and the pro version. And that's what I wanna show you in this video. So let's hop over and take a look at roughly what I'm gonna show you. So this is an example of one of the sliders. I've dropped in some dynamic information. For example, this title, you can see we can put static information if we want to. There's various different design elements and we can just click through and take a look at the various different slides as part of our template design. And that's what I'm gonna show you, how you can re recreate something very similar to this. So let's hop over into Elementor Pro. Let's open up the template setup and this is our template for our posts. Standard catch-all template. As you can see at the top, we're ready to drop in the header section. So let's go ahead and do a search for slider. And once you've got the plugin installed, you'll see we get a selection of different predefined templates. Now you're not limited to only using this as part of a design. You can also use this to do things like apply blog posts. So you could use this on the homepage, for example, you wanted to highlight your blog posts and so on. For this example though, I wanna show you how we can use it with templates and dynamic content. So let's go ahead and drop in a design. You can see we've got a couple of options. You've got things like image carousels, this dragon design, and various different options. Let's grab this general one, pop that at the top of our design. And you can see that now pulls things in. Now there's a kind of weird little glitch with this particular example. You can see it drops in two copies of this particular widget. So all I need to do is just get rid of one of these Hopefully they'll fix that in the next update. So this is what you kind of have with this particular design. You can see we've got header, navigation, and so on. So you could use this as the top of your page if you wanted to with the navigation. You've even got things like a pop-in menu. You've got various different things. Now all of this is controlled by the settings on the left-hand side. So let's take a quick look at those now. First thing you can see, we've got some skins. Now, depending upon the slider type you insert, you'll get some with skins, some without. And skins are just basically varying different designs based around this particular theme. So we can go and take a look at the slide option and you can see there's a slight difference in layout. We can jump over, take a look at this Crelly. Again, a slightly different layout again. Or finally, we can take a look at Meteor, which gives us a different design. And all of these options are customizable. We can turn on and off pretty much everything. So let's set this back to the default. And let's take a look underneath. Now you can set up the slider ratio if you want to. So 16 by nine, four by three, those kinds of things. So you've got full control over setting that up. You've also got minimum height, which works 
on some designs and not so much on others. So I would recommend testing that out on the particular design you choose to see if it actually has an effect. Then you've got your option for your alignment. So this is basically your kind of your content alignment inside there, and you can set this up based upon the different types of devices. Then we've got all the switch options that allow us to turn on and off the various different aspects of this particular slider design. And these will change based upon the slider you insert. So you can see we can show the logo, we can hide it. So if you don't want this kind of navigation set at the top, you can effectively turn all of that off by just choosing to disable the logo, the menu and the off canvas. Then we've got things like your subtitle, title and so on. And again, you can enable and disable any of these. So we'll leave these as they are for now because we might want to turn some of these on and off a little later. If we drop down to the slider section, this is where things start to get a little bit more interesting. You can see we currently have three slides and works in the same way as a lot of other options inside Elementor. If we open this up, all of the settings for that particular slide are inside here and this is where the cool things start to happen. With Elementor Pro installed, we have dynamic tags available for every element of our slider. So what I've done is I've created, taken advanced custom fields, the free version, and I've created some extra custom fields for my posts. We've got a slider two and a slider three, which allows me to drop in extra images. And if I wanted to put in any kind of data, text, links, all those kinds of things, they can be used directly inside this particular widget. So let's go ahead and do something like that. Let's start off with a really simple example. Let's say we want to grab the title of the post for this particular post because it's a template, it'll reference this based upon whatever post is selected. So what we need to do is come in and click on the dynamic tags option, find the option we want, which in this example is post title, we'll select that, and you can see this now pulls in a post title. You've got full control over styling and so on, and the style tabs, so if you wanna change the font sizing, those kinds of things, we can do that inside here. And you can see we've got various different options for the title, subtitle, excerpt, and button. So selecting any of these will give us the different options. I like seeing things like this because it means that we don't have this huge selection of options. It's kind of tabbed away, which just keeps the interface just a little bit sleeker, which is cool. Okay, so we'll grab the title and you can see we can change the title width. We can apply a text stroke, which apparently is a new feature. We can adjust the title color, the typography, those kinds of things. So you can make sure that everything is in keeping. All our global styling is selected inside you. So we can see we can just change this to our global font easy as that. You want to change your colors, you can do that as well. Adjust your spacing. You've even got some advanced styling options. So if you want to get really granular on how this is set up, you can do that inside you. Let's disable that for now. I don't want to bore you with too much of this. If you want to control the social icons, the scroll down and the navigation, you can enable options inside the content area and then you can style those inside the style settings. So tons and tons of options. Let's hop back to our content though. Let's scroll down to our sliders one more time. Let's open up this very first option. And you can see we can set up links if we have a button that we want to send them somewhere else, or we can just totally disable that if we want to. Scrolling down, we can change the text inside this sort of like little area. So if we want to, we can use the dynamic tags on there, and we can just use something like the post excerpt. We can select that, and if there's a post excerpt being used, that will be displayed inside here as well. And obviously you've got full control of the dynamic tags. You can put a before and after and a fallback if we want to, or we can just completely disable it. Then you've got your background options. So currently you see we've got this solid color being displayed and obviously we want to use an image. So what we need to do is switch over to the image option, but you could, if you want to, choose a video and you can have that uploaded to your own server or you can use something like YouTube if you want to. All those options are available should you need them. And then all we need to do for the image or the video or whatever it is, we can use the dynamic tags option. We can select that and for this first slide, we'll use the featured image. We'll give it a second or so and boom, there's our featured image. Now, obviously, if we want to make some changes to this, put an overlay on it, we can do that by hopping over to the style section. And you can see inside there, we've got all the different options. So currently our slider has an overlay set to none. We could change that to be something like background or blend, and then we can set a background color on there. And we can just pull in one of our global colors if we want to, or we can just choose a custom color. So let's just choose this sort of dark, and we'll set the opacity down on that. Set it somewhere around there. And once this kind of comes around to the next slides, let's just fast forward through this, you can see now we're getting that effect. So we can tweak this, there we go, that looks okay. So that's how we can do the first slide. And now what we need to do is go back. And again, if we come down to our second slide, for example, we're gonna just quickly go through this. So our slide title, we're gonna do the same again. We're gonna set this to be our post title. 
scroll right the way down, choose an image, and this time we're gonna use the dynamic tags, but we're gonna scroll right the way through until we get to our ACF image field. Open that up. You can see now all we need to do is click on the little cog, and or little wrench icon, I should say, and change that to one of our custom fields. And this is just a normal image field set up, and it just uses the URL for that image. So we need to select slider two, boom, there we go. That's all done, and we'll do exactly the same now for slider three, and we're simply gonna come in and from our slider three, all we're gonna do is just set our title, click our tags, we'll set the post title inside there, and again, we're gonna come down now and we're gonna grab our background, set this to be an image, use our dynamic tags, and choose image field, click our little wrench icon and set this to be slider three. So that's our sliders set up our dynamic content link through to it. And now if we just simply hit update on this, we can hop over and take a look at this on the site. And there we go, there's our slider inserted into our design. You can see all our options there. If we wanna click through to the next one, you can see there's our second image, our third one, and we can have different data on here if you wanted to. So let's just say you were using this for a real estate site. You might want to have an image of the outside of the property with some information. You might want to have information then on the second, the sort of like inside of it, the grounds around it, plans, video, all those kinds of things. They can all have their own custom information pulled in either from your normal post or from using something like advanced custom fields and pulling in custom metadata. And this is why I'm really excited about this. This is just using the free version. So really, really easy to be able to pull in all that info. So I would suggest taking a look at this particular plugin because I think it's got a lot to offer. The ability to use Elemental Pro's dynamic tags in the free version means it's a really interesting proposition if you're looking for this kind of slider. Well, that's basically what I wanted to show you in this video. It's only scratching the surface of the designs and the options that we have available in the free version. But if you'd like me to cover this in more detail and take a look at some of the other options and how we can use this in our designs, let me know in the comment section below. Now, as always, all of the applicable links are in the description. Check it out, give me your feedback, and hopefully you've enjoyed this content. As always, my name is Paul C, this is WP Tuts. Until next time, take care.